turn white light off. Okay. Turn on camera lights. Okay, turning the camera lights on. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a smart home light switch. Now, this is not your ordinary smart home light switch that you find everywhere else. This is a game changer right here. And you might be like, well, what the hell do you mean? Why is it a game changer compared to everything else? Well, it's all about the ease of installation, which basically means you could remove your already inbuilt switch, your light switch at home and make it smart with nothing else. However, that is the whole marketing hype. But there are some cases where you might need this thing that is also provided in the package. So just a side note that I forgot to add into the video here. Uh, the current one that I'm working on is for the European Union. The US version will be out soon, if not already out. I'll have everything linked down below where you can go ahead and check those out. And um, yeah, carry on. And I'll explain what this is for in a bit here. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because I searched high and low to figure everything out and there was barely any documentation on it. It was just saying it's a one wire switch, which we're gonna take a look at the backside here and also help you understand how to connect this and that you should not do this and you should hire a professional to do it for you. Now, why is this switch a game changer? Well, it's because of the connections back here. Usually on any other switch or light switch that is a smart light switch, you would need more than two wires. So usually you would have basically just two wires connected to your light switch at home, your regular dumb switch. However, with any smart home switches, you also need to provide a power. So consider it as a positive and negative and to power this up. But this thing is, is not receiving a positive and negative. It's doing some magic here. And the magic works sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't work. And now again, like what the hell do you mean? So as you can tell, What's really going on here is we're getting power straight from the electricity grid here. And this side and this side are currently disconnected. This side is going to, let's just say, the ground side of the light bulb here. And once you enable it, it connects these two wires and this thing turns on. But how is this getting Wi-Fi? How is this powering up? Because this thing is connected right now on my wireless router. And there's also some things you need to take into consideration when you're connecting it so you don't have any problems, which we're going to cover also. So the way that this thing is actually getting power is basically hacking the power in a way. However, where it fails to work, which would be with LED bulbs and CFL bulbs. Now, why is that? Well, with those, it'll power up, it'll connect and everything, but once you give it power, it'll just immediately turn off and reboot. But that is only on an LED light bulb, which is basically almost everyone now is running LED light bulbs. And this is why they provide this for you. And I'll explain what this does in a bit. But in my house, which is where I really wanted to make the video, I'm still unable to because I need to get an electrician to install these. Now, unless I go change every single bulb to a normal tungsten type or the filament type, then I should be fine. But that is something very important that's not covered and that's not really told to anyone out there. It's really hard to find that information at least. At least it was for me at the time. And I also wanted to test if non-LED light bulbs need this called anti-flicker pack right here. Now, this is supposed to be basically, this is basically a capacitor right here. Where would this capacitor be installed? So if we take a closer look at the manual here, what we see is this is where the anti-flicker thing will go. So you will more than likely have to use this if you're using LED light bulbs. So as you can tell, it needs to go to the live and also the neutral that is on the other side of where it's coming into the building. So basically right behind your light bulb where it's installed, you know, for example, maybe this is hanging up upside down, you know, on your wall and the two wires that are coming up, basically all you got to do is strip a little, strip a little, and then have this connect both of those wires into place. Obviously you should not do that yourself, have someone else do it, and then you will have uh, no issues with LED. So I'm waiting for an electrician to come and I want these to be installed very, uh, very in a nice clean way where they don't really show up. Now we can also pop off the plastic piece to have a look inside. And what we see here is we have one fat resistor hanging right in the middle. It's very difficult to see two capacitors and uh, that should smooth everything out for us. And the reason why the resistor is there is to discharge the capacitor. So your electrician doesn't get electrocuted if he removes that other thing or and touches these two together. 
then you would have a, uh, a very bad day, basically. You and your electrician would have a really bad day. So keep that in mind. Be very careful with these. So that is how the marketing hype works for this. So if you're not, if you're using an LED light bulb, you will need this thing, but you're still actually using one wire. Now in every other or any other smart uh, light switch at the current moment in time in the market currently will need a neutral wire to be ran to this. And usually most of these only have, you know, just one wire coming in and one wire going out or three wires, but you rarely would have a neutral wire, which would need to come from a socket nearby or, you know, just from somewhere else. Some people might have those, some people might not. But um, yeah, that's what makes this one so unique because some people have, for example, concrete walls like I do, and it's going to be very difficult to run a neutral line, but it'll be much easier for me to install this up there if I wanted to use LEDs. But if I wanted to do a temporary fix, then I can go back to these old filament type uh, bulbs right here and I should be good to go. Now, also another thing you need to take note of here. The 2.4 gigahertz and the 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi. These are not compatible compatible on 5.8 gigahertz. So I'm going to show you the connection process. So in order to get this to connect, actually, before you even need to do that, you need to figure out a way to log into your router. Hopefully, most of you will figure that out. And you need to see if you have 5.8 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz enabled. Now, if your Wi-Fi for some reason or your router is 5.8 gigahertz, then there's no way in hell this is going to work on your uh on your network unless you buy a separate router and you do some router magic and then have that be 2.4 gigahertz and have this connect there however if you have a router that has 5.8 and 2.4 it'll work but the first thing you need to do is disable your 5.8 gigahertz so you can do the installation process and then once it's installed connected and you've tested and everything is running then uh, you can go ahead and go back and enable your 5.8 gigahertz, but also keep the 2.4 gigahertz enabled as well. And then you'll be good to go. So this is what I've been doing every time I get a new thing. I turn off my 5.8 gigahertz, I connect the product, and then I go back in after everything's connected and um, set this up. Now the, in, the, now the setting up process is so freaking simple. It, it's really stupid how simple it is. I was just amazed. Alexa picks it up quickly. Also, uh, Google will pick it up immediately as well once you link your account uh, from whatever Google assistant or you add the skill to Alexa immediately picks it up like for example um, Alexa just picked up in my house just picked up this switch because it's under my account here So anybody at my house right now can actually turn off this turn off and on this light bulb here Which is pretty insane here now check this out if I were to remove this light bulb What's gonna happen here? As you can tell this thing no longer has power why? Because the power was circulating. This was actually receiving power while it was off, but it does, it's not enough power to turn it on. And uh, that's what we couldn't see. So as you can tell, it actually turned off right there. Uh, there's no more power to it because the circuit has been cut open. So it's, there, it's not a closed circuit anymore. So now we stuck it in. It's connecting. Once it's solid, that means it's connected. Look how fast that was. That's officially connected now. So if you made it this far in the video and do want to see the installation process on the Android application, let me know down in the comment section because this video would be hella long. Uh, not that it needed to be that long, but I need to cover a couple more extra things to look out for when you're setting it up. I'm not saying it's hard. It's just the whole 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. You just disable 5.8 gigahertz, connect, and then you can re-enable it. So keep that in mind. That's very important. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested in these topics, let me know because I can continue. I have more stuff. For example, this is my favorite uh, switch. I've calculated actually every single smart switch on the mostly on the internet that I think would be actually usable and always look for Alexa compatibility as well as uh, Google compatibility. Both of them basically are compatible with everything. But this is the most bang for your buck and they're separately controllable. I got in a bunch of these and these are the ones that actually are controlling my studio lights when I said uh, turn the camera lights off to Google. Uh, so it's really nice. They're, they're, you know, you can control them separately. Yeah, if you guys are interested in this stuff, let me know. I have a bunch more things. And also the Sonoff RF bridge is not compatible with Google Home or Google Nest or whatever or Alexa. Keep that in mind. I got screwed with that one. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to set that up or get myself a Samsung hub or something. Another thing you need to take note of, these don't need a hub. They don't need anything. They just need Wi-Fi, which is really nice. So, uh, yeah, they just automatically connect through the app. So let me know if you guys are interested in seeing more stuff or some of my setups that I've done with these. 
and I also have more stuff coming on the way as well. So um, hopefully if you guys enjoy this, we can pick up a couple more and um, take it from there. And again, everything here is linked down below. I'll link some other things as well, Amazon and Banggood. And um, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.